Excellent. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm, uh, it's just fun to see how many different places people are from and how many international places that uh, that people are from. And this this actually works real well with all different types of markets, um, at whether you're, you want to trade the New York or London or uh, some of the other markets, as long as there's liquidity. There's, oh, thank you, Keith. There is... Um, a good opportunity for pullback trading. You just need some volume. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Um, first, uh, the disclaimer, same thing as always, uh, day trading can be very risky. Only trade with money you can afford to lose. Um, anything that I show you is for educational purposes only. Um, your results may vary, you know, all the usual stuff. You guys have been around for a while. Probably you've all, you've heard it all before. Perfect. Thank you, Keith. That's uh, very helpful. Keith is one of our regulars. So he doesn't work. He doesn't work for us. He's just being very helpful. He's one of our regulars and we certainly appreciate it, which by the way, I won't be looking at the chat very much um as i go through uh because i want i don't want to get sidetracked i, I want to get going on this we all have a, a long weekend to look forward to i don't want to take up all of your time by getting sidetracked so questions if you have them wait until the end if you feel like you have to ask go ahead but if i don't answer one of our regulars that that attends our trade room uh can answer for you in most cases. So um, don't expect me to stop and answer questions because uh, I want to keep moving on here, okay? But I will stay and answer questions as long as you want um, after where the presentation is all done, all right? So we're talking about pullback trading. This is what we do. This is all we do. We're not trying to find lots of different ways to day trade, okay? I used to do that. I used to try to find and, and, and try to trade everything I could find, but I've zeroed in on something that was something that I needed, and that is something that is very obvious and very simple and no gray areas, okay? So I started zeroing in on these very simple pullback trades, okay? So... Uh, for example, on this chart, there's four trades right here on this chart. And after the qualifying factors, for, and we're going to go over all of those, after all of the qualifying factors are in place, we're going to place our trades on the open of the current bar, okay? Because we want to check on the conditions and make sure that we understand the conditions at the open of the next bar. That is always our trigger bar or the open of the current bar, okay? That is our trigger bar. And it's very simple to do. Now, it's simple like a bouncing ball, okay? We can all say that a bouncing ball is doing something very simple, right? And because we know perhaps uh, some of the conditions, we can drop a ball and expect that ball to do something specific, bounce, okay? We oftentimes know these conditions just by, because of our experience, you know, our, our life experience. But a bouncing ball, there's really a lot that goes into it. You don't think about that. All you think about is I, I know what, you know, how this ball feels in my hand. I know what the ground is made of, and I know what to expect. But when you start to really analyze what goes into you know, a ball bouncing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of factors. Okay, what's it made of? What's the density? Um, 
uh, what's it filled with? Is it gravel or sand? Is it solid? Is it solid rubber? Is it hard rubber? Is it soft rubber? Um, does it have compressed air in it? Or what's the percentage of compressed air? How high is it being dropped from? You know, what's the energy being put into the drop? You know, was it a simple drop or is it shot from a cannon? What's the, the floor made out of? Is it wood or concrete or carpet or gravel or is it packed dirt? Maybe it's sand. Um, you know, so there's a lot of factors that go into something as simple as a bouncing ball, right? But when you know those factors and you understand those factors without even having to think about them that much, we can apply that analogy to exactly what we do. So you can see as the ball drops, all the characteristics necessary to, to figure out if the ball will change directions when and by how much have been measured, okay? Um, if the ball is made of sand, we know what to expect. If it was dropped only an inch off the floor, we know what to expect. If the floor is made of four-inch rubber, we know what to expect. So with price, we're taking measurements. We're, we're measuring you know, volume, volatility, order flow. We're measuring strength to anticipate exhaustion or strength to anticipate weakness, okay? We're looking at support and resistance levels, which would be our floor or our ceiling. We're looking at divergences. Also, we can know what is most likely to happen right now, okay? We're not measuring all these things to see what's, what might happen an hour from now, where that ball might end up an hour from now. We've got to know right now based on the conditions we have right now. So it is so simple, yet it's not easy per se on, on, because you do have to work at it to learn about those conditions. But we have a very structured way of learning our trade setups and applying that to making trade decisions. So it's, our, our trades are based on a very simple process. And it's so simple, it's something you can easily practice and then identify during the heat of the moment while you're trading very quickly, right? Because you've got experience with, just like you've got experience with the conditions around a ball when it bounces, you, you probably already know what to expect of it without actually measuring things, you know, from experience. Okay. So we have a procedure for entering our trades. All of the trading systems that I tried when I was a struggling trader, that there were no real procedures for qualifying a trade setup. There was all these shades of gray. Well, if this and this does this, and this is this, and this is this and this, then maybe you have a setup. But you got to look out for this and this and this. But, you know, so it, it was very difficult for me to get a handle, and I would jump from trading system to trading system because I just I felt like I was too stupid to understand what the heck was going on. So I would go looking for other things, right? So ours is very simple. We're just looking for the very first condition to exist. And, again, we're going to, we're going to talk about each of these conditions. If it exists, or if it doesn't exist, then we're just going to wait. If it does, then we're going to look for the next condition. If it doesn't exist, we wait. And so forth and so on. So it's a, it's a qualifying process that makes our trading system very logical and linear. So we know exactly when to execute the trade, okay? There's no question. So I don't know, when I, whenever I would get into a trade in the years that I was struggling, I would always, if I was trying to follow a system or something, I would always be sweating. Once I got into the trade, I would always be sweating, wondering, did I do the right thing? And so you start to analyze 
what you did and all the conditions that got you into the trade. And then you may, f you may have missed something and then you go, Oh no, I'm in this trade. So it can be, you know, and I, and, and maybe I should get out or what do I do? I shouldn't have been in this trade to begin with. So it can be uh, very stressful if you don't have a linear qualifying process for entering trades. You know, a lot of them were just like uh, so complicated. And I would, you know, maybe ask the moderator or whatever, if I was in a trade room, I'd go, uh, what's the deal? Should I have entered that trade? And, and, and then there's this long explanation that was very different than the explanation he made the day before and the day before that. But he would say, oh, obviously, yes, you know, look, here's all this stuff and all the reasons for entering that trade. And I'm like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't, I just need a one, two, three, you know, fire, ready, aim, fire. That's just give me ready, aim, fire. So that's what we have now. So if you look at this chart here on the left, you'll notice there's, there's no indicators on the chart. It's just a chart, just your basic chart. There's nothing to, to, to give you any indication that there's something actionable on these charts. So there's no other underlying market um, information other than each bar. You have four pieces of information per bar. High, low, open, close. That's it. That's all you have. There's four pieces of information on these bars. All right. Now, we each bar actually contains a whole lot of information if you're measuring for it, if you're looking for it, okay? So we want to find the right conditions for our ball to bounce, okay? So we're going to start adding some indicators to help us find those conditions or the, the qualifiers to start lining up this uh, if this, then this type decision making, okay? So our mo meter. remember we want to measure momentum or strength so that we can anticipate upcoming weakness, okay? So we have an indicator that does that for us. You'll notice that we're coming at, we'll, we'll be coming out of a, a channel right? And then all of a sudden it starts pushing harder, 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 harder. And the lighter this color gets, the more imminent the pullback, okay? So this is our mo meter indicator that starts to give us, this is not a, this is not a trigger to get into a trade. This is a heads up that something is about to change because of the strength cannot be maintained. There will always be weakness after strength, okay? And that's because people start taking profits. After a, a hard move, people start taking profits. And that's what causes price to pull back a little bit. I've done a lot of work and, and research on momentum traders. And momentum traders, you know, you've always heard buy low, sell high. Well, momentum traders, their, their attitude is buy high, sell higher. Okay, so they want to get in and out very quickly, and so they're going to make sure price is pushed up, uh, and then they dump everything, all right? And and I've done uh, uh, several webinars on that. You can find those on our YouTube channel if uh, if you want to know more about how all of that works. So our FT reset indicator is our support and resistance, um, and then we, at the end of the lines we have our relative strength, right? And that tells us how long it's been since price has hit that line and how how much we expect price, if it approaches in a strong way, how much we expect price to react to that line. Remember, these lines are the floor or the ceiling of our bouncing ball, okay? So um, we're looking for uh, an open of a bar that's five ticks or less from our support or resistance line, okay? If the other conditions exist. Our OBOS, overbought, oversold, all right? So we, we use the RSI 
to measure when prices overbought and or oversold. And again, when price gets overbought or oversold, that's because price has been moving very hard in one direction and it becomes overextended and it can be expected that exhaustion is likely. This is what we're looking for. Price is likely to change directions because it's become overbought or oversold based on strength. So we're measuring strength to anticipate weakness. That's how that this is very simple, right? Measure strength to anticipate weakness. It's a very simple notion. All you got to do is know what and how to measure. And we get within just a few ticks of being right most of the time. And, and if you see uh, what Keith put in, there's some uh, results from our trade room trades over the last three years, okay? Um, so now we're looking at our speed tick indicator. Now, this was uh, the real game changer for us. This tells us when the order is being processed through the exchange, not the order is being placed, but the order is actually being processed, the level two data where, I mean, the uh, time and sales data, where you actually see the orders being processed through the exchange. When the rate at which they're being processed exceeds a certain speed, then we can expect that the price is being manipulated by something that is much more uh, sophisticated than us little retail traders can trade. Okay, so it's very unlikely that all the retail traders in the market all of a sudden decided to, to do something on this particular bar. So it must be something coming from, uh, you know, uh, one of the hedge funds or an HFT, the quants, the, the you know, automated trading uh, by the big boys, okay? They're doing something. And if they're doing something, they're doing something for a specific reason. We're tracking where the big boys are trading because when they do this, there's always a reaction to it, okay? We just got to know what to look for. And that's our speed tick indicator that was really what was the game changer for us when I first started doing this. This speed tick indicator was the indicator I used when uh, the main one, when I was able to finally become a professional trader for a living. Pullback alert indicators. Okay, so we got a, a lot of people that, that go, hey, Tony, how come you, I don't see volume indicators. Why aren't you reading volume? Well, I am. I'm, I am, but I'm only reading certain types of volume. Okay, we're reading every tick that comes into the bar. And we're re not only reading how many ticks, we're reading what kind of ticks are coming into the bar. And when the, the, the flow of the ticks coming into the bar is such that we have an, a churning activity or it points that it's potentially a climax bar, we have this uh, pricing, uh, price might move all in one direction. And then suddenly there's a whole bunch of buying and selling at one point, right? So there's like a churning of price. Uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. And sometimes so fast you can't even see it on the chart, okay? So, but we can pick that up with the volume coming in. When we get that type of activity, that's telling us that there's a good chance that the people that were initially in control of that bar are now losing control of it because there were traders waiting at a certain level to enter that trade or to, uh, to trade it then in the opposite direction, okay? So they start competing. Well, well, again, this starts to become uh, the, uh, in the event of a bar like, uh, of a move like this, the buyers start becoming uh, exhausted. The sellers are not exhausted because they haven't been doing anything. They're just sitting up in here. They they've been waiting for the buyer, for the price to get up here. And then they're not exhausted. They're, they in fact start to control this churning activity and then the the buyers finally get exhausted and down it goes.
Okay. So that's our very powerful pullback alert indicator. The ricochet was a, was a, um, a, a kind of a residual from the speed tick uh, um, analysis that I was doing when I was measuring and looking for the, uh, the big boys, right? So I was looking for a certain speed. Uh, and uh, so we started nailing that down and I went back and I looked at it again. And I started seeing that maybe when price doesn't necessarily reach a certain speed, but it does show rapid acceleration. That also indicated to me that, and, and price was uh, stopping and turning when I saw this rapid acceleration, okay? So that's our ricochet indicator that also helps us identify when price is likely to change direction. Divergence was the thing that put us over the top and started really making a lot of us uh, and turning a lot of us into professional traders that were in the trade room and have been doing this a while. Divergence is really the thing that solidified that this pullback trading was really all I want to do or ever do again. When I had the, the speed tick, just the speed tick indicator, and we were doing really good with that, I was still trading other things. I was still trading some trend stuff, some some uh, continuation type trades. But when we started adding divergence, the our win percentage went up so much that that became my total focus. And so what divergence, what happens with divergence, for those of you that don't know, price and momentum typically run in the same direction. When they get out of sync with each other, meaning maybe price is dropping, but momentum is, is increasing, then that's called divergence. And when you get into a situation like that, price wants to catch up with momentum. So momentum will often change directions and give us an indicator that price is about to change directions. So if we're watching momentum, that tells us what, what price is likely to do in the short term, okay? So this is our super D indicator. We're actually measuring seven different uh, uh, momentum oscillators to indicate divergence, all right? Now, the rock star, this is by far uh, everybody's favorite indicator because this is the trigger for a lot of our trades. It actually combines three of our indicators and and you can create your rock star signal from those three indicators. Those indicators don't print on the chart if you end up getting just the rock star. Only the rock star prints, but it's based on those three indicators generating you know we're collecting the information and when all three of them are in agreement they will generate a rock star okay this is what triggers our trades not all rock stars are a um, are a signal to enter a trade remember we got we have a qualifying process all everything needs to be in the qualifying process, okay? So we talked about these indicators and how each one of them is part of the qualifying process. Step one, step two, step three, step four. If all of that is in place, then when this bar opens, if there's a rock star, that's where you enter the trade. But we do get plenty of rock stars where none of this it takes place. What if we got a rock star on on this bar, you know, we wouldn't trade that. So you gotta, you gotta wait and you still qualify. Okay. So we're looking at a confluence of indicators. We're looking at, um, when you have this qualifying process, you end up getting a confluence of conditions. I've got some video here of actual trades taken in the trade room. Okay. You can actually see, I'm not going to show you static charts. Okay, you, I, I used to go to webinars all the time, and they would show me a static chart, like a plain old chart, 
and they'd go, yeah, and, and uh, we took a trade here, and if you see this and this, and then, okay, so yeah, we took this trade here, and, you know, and it looks really good uh, until you actually try it on live charts, right? And then it just, it's never quite as easy as they make it look when they're showing you on static charts. So I'm going to show you the trades we actually took in the trade room and what they look like. Now, if you'll notice this, this is exactly what I just showed you. See, we're channeling, price drops, starts getting dropping harder. See all the indicators I just showed you? And that kind of gives us a, a hint on what's likely to happen next. Okay? So this bar, the, 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 the entry was right here on the open of this bar. Now, you notice bar dropped. If you didn't get filled here, you may have actually bought it down here, which is even better. All right? So this is what our trades look like in real time. Actually, I'm dragging the slider. So this is a one-minute chart. All right, so this bar opened, and we shorted it probably here or maybe here. It didn't go directly to target. It hits our resistance, which helps to push us back in, uh, back in, uh, in our favor, and then price drops. So it doesn't always, this is called freight training. You know, you enter it here we get some help from the resistance, okay? So th sometimes there's more steam in this, you know, and price going up. It's impossible to know exactly where price is going to change directions, but we get really, really close. And that's how we know where to set our stops and our targets because we've been doing this for almost 15 years now. All right, so more and you know i can show you this over and over and over again i've got some losers in here too See, there's another one and, and again price is channeling we have a hard drop we have our moment mometer uh showing momentum we're oversold we got a speed tick um and then the rock star and boom all right so it's really really straightforward and simple, right? It's simple. All you got to do is know the conditions of what's going on in the market, just like the conditions of the bouncing ball. You just need to know the, you know, the characteristics, and you can anticipate what's likely to happen. All right, so we can go through it a little bit more slowly here. All right, so we got a hard drop. Price has dropped right through that support. This bar opens with a rock star, which is our entry right here. All right, and typically that's what happens. Then we then price may want to, you know, just kind of drift around. Notice we don't have any, the bars aren't really big. They're kind of smallish looking bars. And then suddenly, whammo. Now, go look at, not right now, but when we're done, go look at any trading chart, any time frame. It's got to be a, a time-based chart. And you will see this repeated over and over and over again. Price is just drifting around. This is likely accumulation or distribution that's happening here. That we get these sudden bursts out of that channel it can be one bar two bar three bars four bars but you'll see this burst and and sometimes it's so fast you're sitting there and you go what the heck just happened here and and you think you know wow that was I'm, what is that is that news or what but see we know what's going on because we're measuring for it we're looking for it but i know those that aren't looking for it are sitting there watching the charts go wow what was that well, that's most likely the big boys messing with the market, okay? So we got this big push up. Now, just because we have a speed tick doesn't make it a trade setup. Remember, there's a qualifying process. 
We're getting up here now. We have a speed check, and we're overbought, and we're hitting a line of resistance. Okay. And we have our pullback alert saying that this is a climax bar and price is churning inside this bar, which means that that uh, exhaustion is setting in. Okay, price is not going to just keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Most times, unless there's something weird going on, okay? Sometimes price can just keep going and going and going. But all we can measure for is what's most typical. We can't be, you know, if if a news event comes out or something else happens, we can absolutely get trapped in a trade and, and take a loss. That's trading. Because you can only have a trading system tuned to what is most likely to happen. You will never have a trading system that keeps you out of losses. You have to have a trading system that gets you into winning trades most of the time and be willing to take losses as they come. Okay. So sometimes we can get trapped in a trade like this. We get signals like this and it takes off and keeps going and we get stopped out. Guess what? That's called day trading. On this particular bar, we now have a trigger to enter this trade. That trigger right here or right here. That's the trigger. That's our rock star. And we're going to short that. And if you got it up here, even better. And, it's, and it happens a lot of times because you're, you're waiting for the open of the bar. You see the rock star. By the time you go to put your trade on, price may be up here, which means you're getting a better fill. You'll hear me say that in the trade room sometimes. I say, okay, I shorted the whatever instrument this is. I shorted it. So you'll know in the trade room, you'll know if I'm in a trade. I always call it out ahead of time. So I'll say I shorted it, and I got a better fill, meaning instead of sh shorting it here, I shorted it here. And, that's, and that happens quite often. So you can get a better fill. So we're looking for this agreement of conditions, right? We get a hard push up. Price, the, the mo meter is showing that we've got strong momentum. We're getting, uh, you know, a, a overbought condition. We have price being manipulated by the big boys. We have a churning condition going on. And then we have our rock star that says, okay, now we have divergence, enter that trade. So we're looking for an agreement or a confluence of conditions that tell us it's time to get in a trade. So this is our qualifying process right here. So this is the whole thing. All right. So we got a channel here, right? So if price, if, if price keeps channeling, we're just going to keep waiting. Right. Wait. So I show this guy at a bus stop because we're always talking about uh, waiting at the bus stop because that's really how much once you learn the conditions that the that we're looking for and the process for qualifying a trade and getting into a trade. Once you've learned that and it becomes second nature to you, basically all we do is we're, it's like sitting at a bus stop. There's nothing to do until your bus shows up. You can't make a bus show up. You can't build your own bus in the meantime. You don't run around in traffic looking for a bus. You don't run down the street looking for a bus or go over to another bus stop. You just sit and you wait. And buses may keep showing up, but if it's not your bus, you just sit and wait, okay? And that's what we talk about all the time. So whenever we talk we start talking about, uh, I'm seeing buses, right? That means we're seeing some activity that, that shows that maybe something might be setting up for us. So we may see a, a, a strong move like this coming out of a channel, right? That gives us an alert. So if we have a strong move, then we keep looking. If not, we just keep waiting. Is there a strong potential for exhaustion? If not, we wait. 
if there is, now we're looking for signs that the big boys are interested in this instrument at this exact point in time. If we don't see that, then we wait. If we do, we start looking for our support and resistance. If it qualifies as what we call naked, meaning it doesn't have support or resistance. So uh, there's two different rock star trades. There's a rock star and a naked rock star, and you learn all about that in our trade room um, and our documentation and our training materials. We teach you the different trade setups that we trade. Most of them are all just variations of the same thing. It's not a lot of different trade setups, variations of the same thing. So if it qualifies, if it doesn't qualify as naked uh, because there's no support or resistance, then we wait. If it does, it's time to execute a trade. Okay, all of the qualifying factors. We got a yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's enter the trade. And no sweating about did I do this right. If the answer was yes, 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 then you don't get in a trade accidentally. Or wonder what you should do now because you shouldn't have gotten in that trade at all. So we enter the trade. Um, so we're trading pullbacks from a breakout. We, we're measuring strength to anticipate weakness, right? We're identifying market manipulation so we can anticipate the market's reaction to those manipulations. We have very short exposure time. When I say exposure, meaning we're putting our money in the market for a very short period of time because the longer it's in the market, the more speculative that trade becomes. You are exposed to all of those uh, different influences that are coming into the market all the time. Um, you think about sharks, you know. You're exposed to all the sharks that are swimming around out there in the markets, and you're hoping – Right. If you guys are sitting there hoping that your trade works out, you maybe you shouldn't be in a trade because hope is not really a good trading tool. OK, so we want to get in and out as quickly as possible when we know we have an edge. The safest place for your money is out of the markets. All right. So we have a very short exposure time. We have uh, we limit our losses on each uh, trade. We have a seven tick stop, but we will manage our stops, okay? We will shorten them if the conditions change. So our focus is not on staring at charts, trying to find ways to enter trades. We already know how to do that. We're not looking for new indicators. We're not looking for new things on a chart to help us find good trading opportunities. We've been doing this for 15 years. We found them. Now, the focus is on practice and maximizing your execution skills because you do have to execute and you have to do it quickly when the time comes. Now, you might say, well, I can't do that. I'm not that quick. I no way I can see that. If you can drive a car, you can do this because it's the same thing. You, you have, over time, gained skills driving a car, and you have become very competent at driving a car. And, in fact, you can drive a car from point A to point B without knowing every single thing you did to get that car there, right? This is the same thing. You can practice your execution and get so good at it, you don't even have to think about it. All of our stops are managed by shortening them. Not our target, just our stops. Okay? So like I mentioned earlier, ready, aim, fire. That's it. That's, that's how we get ready for a trade. Uh, this is all one-minute charts. And our focus is futures only in the trade room, but there, we do have a lot of Forex traders that do what we do. 
And we do a five tick target and a seven tick stop. That's what gets us in and out of trades quickly. And that's, and we, we know pretty well what's going to happen within the five to 10 ticks after that. Not so much. Okay. There are too many influences in the markets that can change things very quickly. So we're looking for a five tick target and a seven tick stop. And I know some of you are sitting there going, oh, is that all? Only five ticks? I don't, I don't understand how you could do that. How can you make any money at five ticks? Well, this is with fees. These are hypothetical earnings. The $10 instrument on the left and $5 instrument on the right. As you work your way up, you can start trading multiple lots. Just keep doing the same thing. Remember, just that we're doing something small. We're doing it over and over and over again. We're getting better and better and better at it, and we start increasing our lots. Okay? So all the fees and commissions are taken out of this. So you can see pretty easily, you know, right around in the middle, if you start trading, you know, three, four, five lots per trade. And maybe you take three or four trades, five trades a day. That can add up, right? So instead of trying to, you know, I got a lot of people worrying about, oh, what about the cost and all that? You know, I come from traditional, uh, you know, running traditional businesses. Uh, I was a contractor had a couple of hot tub stores and the expenses involved in day trading are so minute and minuscule compared to traditional businesses that you want to run. Um, I had to, I had to profit every month and this was a long time ago. This was what, 20 years ago. I had to profit $25,000 a month to break even because of all my expenses and running the business. So some of the costs involved in day trading are very, very small. So you have to just accept that you're running a business. There are costs involved in running a business. And if you start to get very nitpicky about some of those costs, you may never quite get into that mindset of this is a business that I'm running. Okay. So here's some more trade setups based on what I just showed you. And this just, there's just, it, it looks like, all right, so this was no trade here, right? So I'm not going to just show you ways to enter. So look, there's no, we have a lot of a, a strong push momentum. We have our, our uh, speed tick, pullback alert, ricochet, lots of conditions exist but we didn't have a trigger to get into the trade. Nothing happened on the open of this bar. Now, high, this is high of the day, this, that dotted line. And we use that for also for support and resistance. It's minor support and resistance. So we did not enter a trade on that trade. All right. And again, no trade here, even though we got the rock star. We did not enter a trade here because it did not qualify based on the rules. And the rules are on this bar, I needed it to be either overbought or have a pullback alert, this dot, preferably both. Then it would have qualified for what we call a naked rock star trade, which means there's no resistance here. But it did not qualify, so we did not take that that trade or that one. Okay. So there's a rock star trade, regular rock star trade. We had support here. So, I mean, and it, it starts to look like the same thing. I'm just showing you the same trade over and over and over again. But if you look at the conditions, channeling, Hard drop. Bars manipulated. Pullback alert. Qualifies for a naked speed tick. 
I mean, a naked rock star trade. So you put on a buy order here. And more times than not, roughly 80% of the time, this is what happened. All right. So I could show you a million of them. It just goes on and on. Now, I said this is simple. But that doesn't mean it's easy. There's a lot that goes into it at first. If anybody ever tells you day trading is easy, just buy their system and click the button, they're lying to you. You probably found out by now day trading is not easy. It is not what you were hoping it was going to be, maybe, and that it requires more work than you probably were planning to do when you got into day trading. I know it did for me. You know, I was hoping because I, I was a contractor and I really wanted to retire from contracting. I really wanted to be done. And then I was introduced to day trading and I started thinking, wow, that looks much easier than what I'm doing now. If I could just study this, of course, I, I'm real smart. I could figure it out in a couple of months and holy cow, I could make as much money as I want in a couple hours a day. That's what attracted me to day trading. Come to find out, <laughs> I probably work more hours a day now than I did then. But I have the flexibility of being able to do it from anywhere in the world. And that's big for me. Okay? So we have, uh, when I say do the work, we have a, a fast forward training program. We have our trade room every, every weekday. We have videos. We have a peer mentoring program. We, uh, you get uh, a support desk, um, and uh, we have uh, sometimes some group mentorings that we do. Most of that now happens in the trade room. I've got a special for you. This is uh, the uh, coupon code up here was from the event on Thursday that we did. Uh, so you can go to this uh, this URL right here, or just go to our um, our homepage, and you'll see um, a store up at the top, and or a shop or something like that. And uh, click on that if you want to go ahead and uh, get a twenty percent discount on any of our programs. Okay, a lot of our traders that trade with us every day and have been for 10 years or more are in the pro trader program and they show up every day and they trade with us every day um, and have been for a very long time. So we have new traders and we have experienced traders in our trade room every morning. Okay. You guys were very quiet, very well behaved. Now you have any questions? Appreciate you all coming today. Uh, we have this nice long weekend. So hopefully you guys have some fun plans for the weekend. Um, the trade room, our trade room is going to be closed on Monday, and we will reopen on uh, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. We do have a trade room trial, and Keith was uh, nice enough to put that link in there if you want to sign up for our free trial for five days. So the most typical sign of manipulation for us is going to be this speed tick right here. That tells us, because we're measuring the rate at which Prices are being, our, our, our orders are being processed. So we're, and we're at the rate at which they're being processed. And so we know that retail traders are unlikely that we all call each other on the phone at the same time and say, push the button now. All right. So if, if it's not retail traders, it's got to be somebody else. Right. Does that make sense? So this speed tick is the is what we're looking for to know that it's likely mechanically manipulated. Okay. The difference is the threshold level. Okay. So what we're looking for, think of it like a speedometer. 
up to 100 miles an hour, we're going to get a white speed tick. 150 miles an hour, uh, 200 miles an hour, we'll get a, a medium colored blue cyan colored speed tick. Still tradable for us. But it also gets our antenna going, uh, we got to be careful. There may be more at work here than just a regular manipulation. Maybe it's a news event. I don't know, but we're going to, we're going to be careful, but for me, I'm still going to execute the trade. Then we get the dark blue speed ticks. Those are holy cow prices moving so fast. I don't know what's going on. I'm not trading this. And it keeps you out of the trade when, when things are going so fast. I mean, we can get, these these manipulations, uh, they can start firing off against each other, and price goes so fast that we don't know what's going on, and we've lost the ability to anticipate what's going to happen on the open of the next bar, so we back away. So that's why there's different um, thresholds. Um, let's see. What are the typical? Okay. The arrows on the left side of the bar, you're talking about on the video? You mean on the right side of the bar? These? These arrows right here? Is that the one you're talking about? Uh, Stuart? This is a little tool called um, OTS which stands for open target stop. What this does is it tells us where this bar open. And then if we were to put on a buy order, we'll see that the target is, would be here and the stop would be down here. If we put on a sell order, the target would be here and the sell. Would, it's a little helper tool. It's not a trigger for anything other than it helps us to see where our target or stop would be if we entered at the open of that bar. Um, lobster thermidor. Huh. Okay. Um, does not work with thinkorswim only ninja trader. Cause we, we're, we're futures traders and I developed it, um, on ninja trader and, um, uh, uh, I have developed it on other platforms, but it just didn't work out cause they're the ninja trader is so much more powerful and can do so many more things and it's easier for programmers to actually work with ninja script than with some other types of uh of scripting um so what we recommend people do if they don't want to switch from their broker or from their their order entry just use the free version of ninja trader uh all of our indicators work on the free version and uh, uh, we have a lot of people that, you know, they, they love their broker and their order entry, and, and, but they want to use our stuff. No problem. Just use the free version of NinjaTrader. Uh, yes, yeah, software is included in the programs. Not all the software is included in the first two and the starter and the extra income. Uh, let me go back to that. Um, but if you go to this URL, go to our store, you'll see which programs include which software. Okay, the, and now the Pro Trader, not only do you get all the software we have, all of the indicators, you also get anything we ever develop in the future. Okay, let's see. Talked about that, talked about that. Uh, I see the note on the six instruments you trade. I heard you say you trade from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. Oil and gold open earlier than the regular market at 9.30. Are most of your trades in the first 30 minutes from the instrument open? No, not necessarily. Um, in fact, we may sit quietly at the bus stop all morning 
and suddenly all of our trades start happening towards the end of our trading session. We don't know when they're going to ha- are are going to uh, happen. We show up for work, and we wait. And sometimes it's busy right right off the bat, and we get a lot of trades in the first thirty minutes. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we wait and wait and wait and wait. It gets boring and we have to just start talking about other stuff or nothing. We just sit and wait. Um, And then the trades show up. So the markets are going to do what they're going to do. We just got to wait for our setups to show up. Okay. I enter with, uh, I teach people, you want to enter with only a limit order. Eventually, when you're trading multiples and you've gotten really good at your order entry, you can do a combination of limit and market orders. But initially, when you're first learning, if you start placing market orders, you're going to take some slippage. And if we've only got a, um, if you uh, you only got um, five ticks to work with, and price slips two or three ticks, well, you don't have much left in that potential. So we don't want to take slippage initially when you're first getting started. Um, Are your results dependent upon trading all six inches? The one that you looked at on the results page? uh, Yeah, those are based on our trade room trades. So yes, we trade all six instruments. I would never limit myself to just trading a couple of instruments when From day to day, we may get all of our trades on the ES one day. All of our trades could be on the CL and GC the next day. All of our trades, we don't know. They could be spread out. We're just looking for opportunities. (coughs) And remember, we're just sitting and waiting. So all we're doing, we're just looking. We have six charts, and that's it. We have no other time frames. No other time frames that we're looking at. We're looking at one chart per instrument, period. And that's all we need. So it's very easy to just keep scanning, scanning, scanning. And when you get used to it, you can actually see out of the corner of your eye when price, remember I showed you, it starts channeling and then it breaks out of that channel, right? It, it, it will break out of the channel Because price is just drifting around, nothing's going on, and then suddenly you start seeing these big bars moving hard and fast. That gets your attention. You want to trade the futures. Yes, it's open 24-5, but you want to trade it when it's the most liquid, okay? When most other people are trading it, and that's between 9 and noon. Okay, that's going to give you the best and most opportunities. You can trade it during the slower time. You're going to be and and the setups are just as good, but you won't get as many. And so my recommendation is that instead of sitting on your butt for four hours in the afternoon doing nothing, maybe getting one or two trade setups. Go practice and practice 20, 30, 50 trades in that four hours. Practice your execution so that in the morning you're sharp. You're, you've gotten your executions down and you're ready to go. To me, that, that four hours trading in the afternoon is really boring and it's a waste of time and the, so if you want to trade the overnight, if you want to trade London, that can be pretty good for a couple of hours each day. Um, so, again, there's some volatility. There's some liquidity there. So that's not bad. But you want to trade when most people are trading because that's going to give you the most and best opportunities. If I missed a question, uh, put it back in there again. Oh, Gordon, if you have entered a trade at a major potential reversal area, do you ever hold the trade and move stop to break even? Um, No. I have a hard target plus five. And I started doing that because somebody once said, you never go broke putting money in the bank. 
So I hit my plus five and then I sit back and I wait for the next opportunity instead of trying to squeeze uh, a trade. For, I'm, I'm expecting, okay, so for all you trend traders, I'm expecting this trend right here. We have, a, we have a downward trend, don't we? I'm expecting this trend to continue. The only thing I know is that we're going to get a pullback from that trend. Whoops. Uh, let me go back. This trend is going to go and it's going to pull back like it did here. And then it's going to drop some more and it's going to pull back. And then it, I, my expectation is it's going to go some more, just like all trend traders have the expectations that the trend is going to continue. Now, this could also be a reversal. We don't know. But for the sake of safety, my assumption is that this is going to pull back a little bit and then the trend is going to continue. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense to put on runners or trailing stops if you feel like price is going to turn and drop anyway. So we hard target. Hard target, put the money in the bank, wait for the next trade. And did I get everybody's question? Uh, I think I did. If I did not answer your question, please put it in there again or email us at support at theintentionaltrader.com. I am going to um, send out an email with a link to this video. And if you want to just reply to that email, you can do that and send questions that way. But let's go, uh, let's all go have a great long Labor Day weekend. Enjoyed this this morning. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Would love to see you guys come hang out with us in the trade room, get you started. Uh, I will be around this weekend some. Uh, we are traveling a little bit up just a few hours north of here, but uh, I can help you uh, if you're in the uh, Pro Trader program. I can actually remotely connect to your computer and set everything up for you uh, and get you ready to be trading on Monday morning or Tuesday morning. So just let us know how we can help. So everybody have a great weekend and hopefully we'll see you all very soon. Oh, Patrick, yes. So anything that you purchase, you get 100% credit to an upgrade, okay? So we understand that you want to get started. People want to get started, kind of touch, dip their toe in the water, see if we're the real deal, see if the indicators actually work, see what kind of support they get from us, see what it's like in the trade room. Stick your toe in the water, kind of get used to it, and go, okay, this is the thing. This is this is. This is working for me. I, I believe in this. I want to go ahead and upgrade. And we'll, we'll credit 100%. All right, everybody. Hopefully we'll see you all next week. Bye now.